Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. This is part 25 and today we will continue talking about a basis of a subspace. In particular, we will consider coordinates with respect to a given basis. However, you already know, before we start with such an important topic, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. As a supporter, you have access to PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos. Okay, with this let's start and first recall the definition of a basis of a subspace. This notion has two ingredients. First, it's a family that spans the whole subspace and second, it's a family that is linearly independent. So we have already talked about examples, so let's consider the vector space R2 for visualizations here. So this is simply the plane and there we can consider the standard basis. This means here we have the canonical unit vectors E1 and E2. And now you should know, with respect to this basis here, we can describe any other vector in the plane. We just have to say how many steps we have to go to the right and how many steps we have to go to the top. And of course, this could also go into the negative directions. In other words, the basis just describes such a grid here. And of course, here you know, this is how we start describing vectors in the plane. So you see, in this case here, the vector v is given by saying we have to go two steps into the x direction and maybe four over three steps into the y direction. Hence, these two numbers here is what we call the coordinates with respect to the given standard basis. So the vector v here can be described by coordinates. Therefore, if we choose a different basis for the vector space R2, we get different coordinates for the same vector. So let's visualize that again. So here's our vector space R2 as the plane, and now we choose two different vectors as a basis. So for example, this one could be our first basis element, and this one the second. Now there you should see, obviously both points for basis are satisfied. However, now this new basis here also defines a new grid in the plane. So you see, it does not have to be right angled as before, this is no problem at all. Indeed, this new, more complicated grid could be more helpful for your problem you want to solve. So it simply depends what are the vectors you need to calculate with. So indeed, this means you can choose a more complicated basis to make your calculations easier. So for example, here for the vector v, we have two new coordinates. And you see, it's simply 1, 1. So we just have to go one step into the direction of the first basis vector and then one step into the direction of the second basis vector. So you immediately see the numbers are much simpler than the coordinates with respect to the standard basis. And now of course, here on the right hand side, we could write these two coordinates as a column vector again. This might be a little bit confusing because it's the same vector on the plane, just represented by different bases. I show you later how we can avoid confusion there. However, first let's write down the definition for coordinates in the general sense. So you have already seen, it's not a complicated notion at all, but we will need it for all calculations later. Okay, now the assumptions we need here is that we have a general subspace in Rn, we call it U, and B should be a basis of U. Okay, and now what we do is that we take any vector lowercase u in our subspace u. And we know by assumption that this u can be spanned by the basis vectors v1, v2 and so on. There we use the first term that the basis spans the whole subspace. This means our vector u can be written as a linear combination. So we have lambda 1 times v1 plus lambda 2 times v2 and so on until we have lambda k times vk. So this is a linear combination with coefficients with real numbers lambda j. And now you already know, these coefficients we now call the coordinates of the vector u with respect to the basis b. And indeed, an important thing to note here is that these coefficients are uniquely determined because our family for the basis is linearly independent. So there's only one way to write a linear combination for vector u. And with this we know the coordinates of u are well defined. 
Moreover, please remember here, we have exactly k numbers for the coordinates. And these coordinates exist for all vectors u in our subspace u. And of course, if we have these uniquely determined numbers and the basis b, we can regenerate the original vector u in Rn. And for this reason, there is a special notation one uses sometimes to denote the vector u. One simply puts the coordinates lambda1, lambda2 and so on into a column vector. However, now you see, this could be definitely confusing because u is a column vector with n components. Therefore, the only correct way to interpret this equality sign here is to read this column vector as this linear combination here. And in order to emphasize this, one usually puts the basis b in the index. So you see, this notation can be helpful if we just do vector calculations in the subspace u. Then we just calculate with the numbers we actually need. However, I don't want to go into the details here, because we will discuss this when we talk about the change of basis. This is a more complicated subject for another video. To end this video here, I would say, let's look at an example. From the last video, we already know that R3 has this non-standard basis here. And now we take a vector u and ask what are the coordinates of u with respect to this basis. And there, let's take the vector 1, 2, minus 1. And now you already know, here these numbers are the coordinates of u with respect to the standard basis. But obviously not with respect to this basis here. However, we already see which linear combination we can choose to get to the vector u. We immediately get the correct linear combination if we start here at the bottom with the third coordinate. Because in order to get the minus 1 there, we need the third vector here once. And then, in order to get the 2 here, we need the second vector twice. And then we just have to combine these two vectors here to see that we need the first vector once. So in other words, you see, the system of linear equations was easily solvable. Hence, we get the coordinates of u with respect to this new basis are 1, 2, 1. So in this case, almost the same as the coordinates with respect to the standard basis. Therefore, I would say, let's also look at another example here. So maybe let's take the vector u tilde, which is given by 3, 0, 0. And then we immediately see we just need the first vector in the basis here times minus 1. So the coordinates here are given by minus 1, 0, 0. Okay, and now you know what we mean when we speak of coordinates of a vector with respect to a given basis. So maybe this was not so complicated, but we talk about more complicated notions for a basis in the next videos. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.